What is up everybody? This is Matt with the Hardcover Comic and tonight is a very, very special near and dear overview for me and that is He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Omnibus. Uh, so you have a really gorgeous cover for the dust jacket here. There is the spine, really awesome spine with the power sword. He-Man there in the reflection. And then you have a little bit more modern He-Man art here. Uh, the cover price on this is 150 US, 195 dollars Canadian, um, and this is really collects everything. Um, I didn't think it was going to collect the digital chapters and the origin stories, but it does, which is super awesome and exciting. So uh, it has literally a who's who of writers that have worked on it. Some of them only did you know one or two issues, but literally a who's who of writers and artists. Um, but this book is going to collect He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Series 1, 1 through 6, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Series 2, 1 through 19, He-Man the Eternity War, 1 through 15, Masters of the Universe Digital Chapters, which like I said, I didn't think was going to be in here, 1 through 8, Masters of the Universe Origin of He-Man number 1, Masters of the Universe The Origin of Hordak number 1, Masters of the Universe The Origin of Skeletor number 1, DC Universe versus Masters of the Universe 1 through 6, He-Man Thundercats 1 through 6, and DC Comics Presents number 47, which was the team up with Superman, and then a special Masters of the Universe preview in Masters of the Universe 1982 1 through 3. So it's got a lot. This thing is massive. Uh, think Doom Patrol size, maybe even larger than Doom Patrol. I think it's pushing 1,600 pages, give or take. Uh, so let's now dive into the meat and potatoes of this thing. So here you have, you know, gorgeous artwork here with He-Man battling Skeletor here on the spine. And then goes over here to... Skeletor staff, and in the background you have Evil In, Triclops, Beast Man, Trap Jaw. And on the front, it is a little bit harder to see here, but you have the Sorceress, a Grey Skull, King Randor, Moss Man. I love Moss Man. When I was a kid, I used to love that action figure. Um, now the binding on this is somewhat tight, which is to be expected due to the fact that, well, it's freaking massive. Uh, but you have a gorgeous title page here. And then you kind of have like the who's who and who's all, uh, who all wrote in this and, and whatnot. Uh, Keith Giffen and Freddie E. Williams the second are actually going to be at a con that I'll be going to later this month. So I'm thinking about actually taking this book and lugging it around and, uh, having them both sign it. I think that would be pretty cool to have both their signatures on it. Um, Table of contents. Here you go. Gorgeous table of contents. Let's kind of scroll down here so you guys can pause it if need to or you can do whatever, but. Yeah, this book is massive. Now, while I will say about this is that the pages are nice and thick. They're not super thin. Kind of like uh, what some of the Marvel books have been lately. They've gone to a much uh, thinner paper. Almost too thin. Uh, think, uh, you know, the uh, Vision book. The Vision uh, hardcover. That thing had such thin pages it was ridiculous. Um, this is not like that. Yeah, pushing 1,500 pages. So this is not like that at all. The pages on this are actually nice and thick, which is awesome. Like I said, the binding, a little tight, but that's to be expected for how, you know, freaking large this book is. Um, because you do have so many artists working on this book, the art is all over the place as far as style. Um, I would say I think all the art is glorious in this book, but definitely the, the style of art is very different from book to book, um, page to page, story to story, just because, well, you have so many different artists and styles of art and things like that in this book. So it's kind of got a little of something for everybody. Um, so this book, I've stretched out the spine a couple times now trying to prep for this, and you really got to kind of... You know, it doesn't want to stay open until probably page 300 or so, if I remember correctly. Let's see here. Well, you guys get a nice view of the 
book with all the different art styles. Okay, starting. Starting to stay open. Okay, so around uh, Siege is when it starts to stay open a little bit. Um, now, you guys will notice here. Some people might think that the binding is busted. That is not the case at all. As you can see here, the binding itself is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with the binding. It's just it came the tail band came a little bit unglued from the block there. Um, it's really not that big a deal. Uh, it's strictly decorative. Um, I personally love headbands and tailbands because I think it makes a book look classier and really completes it. Um, but like I said, it's completely decorative. So it's not, don't think the binding is busted. It's not. Um, and it's actually super easy to fix. You just get some PVA glue, throw it right in there with like a Q-tip or, you know, popsicle stick or something. You can kind of put that in there and reset it and you good as new. It's, like I said, it's just strictly decorative. Um, uh, but I did want to point that out. So in case people saw it and they thought, oh, the binding's broke. That is not the case. But see, after you get to Siege, the book stays open really nicely. And it continues to stay open. Ooh, I really like that page. Um, it really kind of continues to stay open throughout quite a bit of the book. So, it's not horrible. Um, I mean, especially for as large as this book is. I know a lot of concern for people was, how am I going to read this thing? It's just too unwieldy. It's too massive. Well, it, you know, you're definitely going to want to read it on a desk or some type of a, a reader uh, stand that you might have. You know, something something along those lines. Um, so now we're jumping into the Freddie E. Williams artwork here. He did the artwork on uh, the He-Man Thundercats. So yeah, I really love his work on like anthropomorphic animals. I think he draws like some of the coolest animals. So Thundercats was definitely right up his alley, I feel. And not only that, but uh, it was a good story too. And then in the back here, you've got, you know, He-Man from 1982. The team up that one's with the team up of Superman. I'll get you, Royal Boob. That's a horrible, horrible Skeletor impression. Uh, but yeah, and then you have all the different variant covers in the back. So loads of extras, if you will. Oh, the action figure cover. I love that. That looks like, is that really, yep, that is Darwin Cook. I was going to say, is that a truly Darwin Cook, or was that, like, somebody, like, that was Darwin Cook inspired, but that was truly Darwin Cook. And then you have the character concept drawings. You know, He-Man in Space, that cartoon, was it The New Adventures of He-Man, I think is what it was called. He-Man in Space. Um, I will say this, though. If you guys want to ever get a commission by a really, really badass Motu artist, um, he didn't do anything in this book, but the man's Motu art is absolutely... All of his art's phenomenal, but especially his Motu stuff. Check out Chris Campana. That guy is, is a stud. I love his Motu stuff, and he loves drawing it. It's like one of his favorite things, so... But, there you have it, folks. An overview of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Omnibus. And stay tuned, because probably in the next few days, I should be getting the Star Wars by Jason Aaron Omnibus, and I will be doing a review on that one as well, like I promised. So, until next time, the power is yours.